today's video, we're gonna take a close look at an electrical set of construction drawings. I'm gonna be talking about how I would approach reading and digesting these from start to finish. By the end of this video, you'll have a good understanding of what's included in the electrical drawings, how to read the electrical drawings, and how the electrical drawings tie into the rest of the building and the overall project. So let's go. All right, if you're new to this video series or new to my channel, I would highly suggest starting at the beginning of my drawing review video playlist, as I include some great tips throughout each of the previous videos to help build on the skill set of reading and digesting construction drawings in these later videos. So what's all included in the electrical drawings? Well, the electrical drawing set will include all the power requirements in the building, site power if it's a new building or a new electrical service, electrical demolition if applicable to the project, lighting plans, and more. Telecommunication or data, the fire alarm system and security systems are considered low voltage, but are typically still combined in this overall electrical drawing set. Some engineers might just designate different lettering for the low voltage series at the bottom right of each drawing sheet. So we've got public and private utility companies that serve an electrical grid both above ground and below ground throughout our communities. When you build a new building, you need power, so you've got to connect into that grid. Well, the grid is set up for high voltage to both accommodate customers' needs as well as the fact that voltage is lost in transit over long distances. And since voltage is lost, these power companies install step-up transformers to transmit this power over these long distances. So when the power makes its way across the grid to its final location at the project, you'll also need a step-down transformer to bring that voltage back to the voltages required for that type of building use. So if you see these, that's what a typical transformer looks like. The utility company will install this step-down transformer near or on your site and hook it up to the grid. Then there is a circuit that connects from the transformer and feeds into a meter where the power company tracks and bills usage. This meter feeds into the building through a main electrical switch gear or switch board, which is the central power station in the building, usually in an electrical room or an electrical closet. From there, depending on the size of the building, you'll have any number of sub-panels throughout the building. These sub-panels are fed by your main feeders, and then there are subsequent branch circuits throughout the building. Also, each electrical drawing set should come with a set of specifications that we need to read further to understand the requirements of the electrical scope for this project. The specifications will talk about material types, installation requirements, and more. Okay, before we jump into the specific details within this drawing set, which are those zoomed in drawings within the plan set, we're going to get a general understanding of the plans at a high level. I always suggest this for all drawing sets, starting with a zoomed out overview, working ourselves further and further into those smaller details. So we'll take a brief look at all the pages by skipping through the drawing set and reading the sheet names. And then we'll focus on each page individually. And finally, we'll start to look at those smaller details. So let's get going on these plan sheets and see what they say. All right, here we're starting off with sheet E, 0.1, electrical legend, abbreviations, and connections, which is gonna be the most important page when learning how to read electrical drawings. Then we have E, 0.2, lighting fixture schedule, which explains the different types of light fixtures on this project. After that, we have E-0.3 Site Plan Electrical, which is going to show us how power gets into the building from a new service or an existing service outside the building, as well as any site lighting such as our light posts and potentially security wiring for cameras on site. ED-1.1 is our first floor electrical demolition sheet. E1.1 is our first floor power and special systems, which shows majority of our receptacles, low voltage data outlets, mechanical or plumbing equipment that needs power and more. Then we have E2.01, which is our first floor lighting throughout the space. After that, similarly is E3.1, first floor fire alarm and security. Next is E4.1, Penthouse Part Plans Electrical. Then E4.2, Roof Plan. The next sheet in the series is E5.1, Schematic Power and Fire Alarm Diagrams. 
Similarly, E5.2 is the schematic telecommunications and security riser diagrams. Then we have E6.1, E6.2, E6.3, and E6.4, which are all expanded electrical detail sheets. Then moving on to E7.1 and E7.2, which are our panel board schedules, which shows us the circuit connection between each electrical panel in the building and that end receptacle, fixture, or piece of equipment. And last is E7.4, lighting controls schedule. All right, since that was our last page in the series, let's go back to the beginning of these electrical drawings, starting with E0.1, the electrical legend, abbreviations, and connections. So with all these drawing pages, I typically start with reading the general notes on each page. So we're gonna jump up here top left. Now, note one reiterates that the electrical contractor is to read all the drawings for all the other trades, which pretty much states there might be some specific power requirements elsewhere in this overall drawing set. Now, moving down to note three, this states the need to coordinate all mounting heights with the architectural plans, sections, elevations, and casework details. And this last note we'll look at is note four, which states to coordinate with walls that are to remain versus new walls. Now, new walls would get junction boxes for receptacles recessed in the overall wall assembly, such as a wood framed wall, light gauge framing, or new masonry walls. When you have existing masonry walls, you're limited to surface mounting the conduit and junction boxes, which is why they call out this wire mold. Below that, we've got a chart for wire sizing based on the overall length of run for 20 amp circuits. It also sizes the conduit for that wire to run in. Larger number wire sizing is actually smaller wire. So the number 12 is smaller wire than the number four wire listed here. Okay, we've got some more general notes, including some notes on demolition, but we're gonna move over that to the symbol section. Now, these symbols are showing lighting, switches, outlets, telecommunication, conduit, sound, power, fire alarm, security, and some miscellaneous symbols, so let's dig into these. So starting under lighting, the first one shows a couple different symbols for different size light fixtures, followed by a symbol for strip lighting. Last, it shows emergency power fixtures. Now, newer or larger buildings have separate backup generators typically in the case of power loss, while some other buildings could utilize fixtures with battery backup or a combination of the two. And just a note, there's likely gonna be some specific emergency circuits throughout the building to maintain those life safety systems so that people can safely navigate outside the building, whether it's emergency lighting or exit signage. Okay, moving down, we have all of our switches, which control lighting to the space through a manual wall switch or sensors that detect occupancy in the space to lower the overall power consumption for the building. Below that are our outlets, from the standard receptacle mounted 18 inches above finished floor to receptacles with USB ports incorporated, special receptacles that serve non-standard equipment, as well as an explanation of these symbols where we see dashed lines and slashes on each receptacle that we'll see later on in this plan. Moving up from there, we've got telecom symbols for all of our low voltage data outlets, telephone outlets, audio visual outlets, and wireless access points. And wireless access points, or denoted WAP, that's what provides our Wi-Fi within the building. Then we've got actual conduit symbols, and the conduit is the pipe that the actual wire gets pulled through. A home run is a direct path from the end termination all the way back to the electrical panel. If we keep going, we've got additional power symbols such as our panel boards or where motors are going to be serving equipment such as pumps. We also have safety disconnects, which is a manual disconnect to shut down a system in the event of an emergency, as well as a couple other symbols. Next, we have our fire alarm symbols, with the first one being a pull station. We also have duct type smoke detectors, and if you recall from my mechanical drawing review video, we talked about dampers as this relates to that. Now this smoke detector is mounted inside the duct and detects the presence of smoke from a fire being carried in the duct. Now when this happens, the damper closes so that the air, or more so fire, isn't circulated throughout the building. There are also visual and voice alarms that trigger when this alarm goes off. 
This system also connects to the sprinkler system with a flow switch. So sprinkler heads are typically triggered by heat, which shatters a small bulb in the sprinkler head that triggers the release of water and flow in the system, or sometimes a chemical agent. After a sprinkler triggers and releases the water, the fire alarm flow switch will detect the flow of water in that main sprinkler pipe and send a relay signal back to the fire alarm panel to trigger those alerts throughout the building as well as the fire department. Last, we'll look top right at these symbols for security cameras, card readers, and door contacts, which I'll explain a little bit more later on in this video. And other than that, we've got some abbreviations listed on this page that we can always reference back to, but the symbols are gonna be the bulk majority of explaining the systems and what we're gonna see on the plan view of these drawings. Okay, moving on to E0.02, the lighting fixture schedule. So each light has a fixture type designation, which is just a letter or numbering system associated with each light fixture because they can't pack all the words for these fixtures on the actual drawings. So if we wanted to know the light type, size, manufacturer, model, voltage, wattage, lamp type, and mounting type, we'd cross reference with this page on the actual plan sets. And if you wanna go the extra mile and know exactly what the light fixture looks like, just copy the model number from this chart into Google and it'll give you a good idea of what to expect before the light fixture gets to the site. Also, it's good practice for the electrical contractor to double check that the lighting system is coordinated with the ceiling grid system because ceiling grid systems can come in different sizes and lights are designed for different grid systems. The design team should have taken care of this effort, but it's worth checking, and I'll mention why specifically as it relates to this later on in this drawing video. All right, there are a few more general notes on this page, but we're gonna keep this train moving. Here we have E0.3, our site plan electrical. Now, if I zoom in on this area, I can see that there was an existing transformer that is being removed based on the RX, or remove existing note. It likely needs to be replaced because the old transformer was sized smaller for a smaller application. But with all the upgrades that this building is getting, the transformer also needs to be upsized and replaced to accommodate the increased needs. So the new transformer is gonna sit close by and we see where it's going into the building at this electrical room. Also, bottom left on this page, we have notes about site lighting. So the first one is S1, and this is a DSX1 fixture, which is a light pole. And if I move over to the right side of this page, we can see three of these along the sidewalk to help illuminate this entrance. Okay, on to ED1.1, which is our electrical demolition plan. Now I'm not gonna go over this page in depth. If you've watched my previous videos, the general line of thought is that if there is a typical dash line, it indicates a demolition. Solid lines typically are meant to show items that are existing to remain. But we gotta read all the notes on this page and just take a double check at all these details just to make sure. But other than that, we're gonna move on to E1.1, our first floor power and special systems. So let's jump top right on this page. There are all kinds of drawing notes with circles that actually relate back to this specific page. Looking at note one, it says to mount receptacles of four inches above the baseboard heater. Now the standard code height, at least in the United States for a receptacle is 18 inches above finished floor. Also noted on our legend page, if you recall, which is why they called out this specific height since it's non-typical. Okay, let's move over to the left side of this page and zoom in over these two rooms. We're gonna tackle the layout of this room and what these symbols mean by pulling up our symbol chart. So we can see here that this W stands for wireless access point. This A stands for admin data drop. The M stands for polycom ceiling microphone. Makes sense because this is a conference room. And then we have a camera with this Note 18. So let's go take a look at this Note 18. So this Note 18 says that it's a camera for that same Polycom system, which makes sense because it's the conference room. And finally, we have a handful of data outlets, receptacles, and some other symbols. Now, next to these receptacles, we've actually got some numbers such as C13 and C15. So these actually tell us which circuit they're on and this is gonna take us to our panel board schedule. 
So all of this power originates from an electrical panel in the building. So I'm gonna quickly flip over to E7.2 panel board schedule. So if I zoom in on this page, I can see this C13 and this C15 circuit, which gives me all the information I need on these individual circuits. Now, if I look up here, it tells me which panel board this circuit ties into. Now this says this is branch panel C, which is located in room electric 220B. So let's go back to that power drawing we were just on and look and see if we can find this electric 220B room. Okay, it looks like we found it. So these circuits that go from the conference room lead back to this 220B electrical room and this panel board within this electrical room. But you'll notice that there's not a line drawn between the two showing the circuit or conduit run from the panel to receptacle. Now, unlike ductwork or plumbing piping that is physically drawn on the plans, larger projects don't always show all these connections in plan view, which is why we have to reference back to the electrical panel board schedule. The electrician will plan and coordinate their runs of conduit from the panels throughout the space. So the space we're looking at actually has a bubble around it with the note detail two on E1.1. Well, we're already on drawing E1.1, so let's go take a look at detail two. So we can now trace where all the power originates from and ends at in the building by using the circuit numbers and the panel schedule. And the rest of this page is gonna show the same thing over and over with each circuit originating from a particular panel board. So we're gonna move on to E2.1 first floor lighting. All right, I'm gonna zoom in on the left side of that page again at the same area we were looking at on the previous power plan, and we can see the lighting that is gonna be serving these two rooms. So if we recall from our legend, these symbols are for one foot by four foot fixtures as well as two foot by four foot fixtures. The A, A, E, L, and L, E are fixture types if we recall from our lighting fixture schedule. So let's take a quick flip back to that E0.2 lighting fixture schedule, and we see these specific lighting fixtures intended for this room. Now looking at the E, this just indicates that the light comes with an integral emergency battery. All right, I know we're jumping around a bit, but this is how we gather all the information to make sense. So we're gonna go back to E2.1 first floor lighting. And on the bottom right of each fixture, we see L4. So this references back to the panel that powers these lights, just like our receptacles did. So we're gonna flip forward to E7.1, another panel board schedule drawing, and we're gonna zoom in on this branch panel, and it listed L for lighting. We see L4 listed as well, so we know that this panel feeds the lights in that room. This panel board is also located in electric room 220B. Okay, so let's wrap this back up on E2.1 first floor lighting. All right, there is also these OS, which stands for occupancy sensor, which flips on the light automatically when a user or occupant enters the space. We also have manual switches in this room listed as S3LV and S4LV. So quickly pulling up the legend page, we can confirm that this is a manual switch in the room on the wall. And adjacent to this space, we have our exit signage as well. What this drawing doesn't show is the architectural reflected ceiling plan as it relates to the lighting, which would be nice so that we can easily see what type of ceiling it is, what other overhead fixtures would be installed in that ceiling, such as HVAC grills, to better coordinate the overall layout of the space. And if you recall, this also is why I mentioned earlier about confirming grid type. Since it's not shown on here, I think we should do a double check at a future date. All right, zooming back out, there are all kinds of lighting fixtures throughout. We just have to use our symbols, our lighting fixture schedule, and our panel schedules to figure out how they're all connected and what exactly they are. And the next page is E3.1, first floor fire alarm and security. So again, using our symbol legend, we can see a ceiling mounted fire alarm voice speaker with strobe that will trigger in the event of a fire. Right outside this space, we see a fire alarm pull station. We also see a couple security systems. So let's reference our security symbols. Well, we see our cameras and then we see this box that says CR. 
Well, this CR stands for our card reader. So when the card reader is swiped outside the building, it sends a signal to unlatch the door. We also have door contacts. The door contact consists of a little sensor mounted on the door frame and a magnet mounted on the door itself. Now this sends a signal back to the security monitoring system that the door is either open or closed. Now in a highly secure building, it'll notify a security team if the door's been propped open longer than it should be. All right, it looks like the rest of this page is gonna have the same information repeated throughout. So we can move forward to E4.1, penthouse part plans. Now this is gonna show us mechanical equipment in these spaces to better understand power requirements for that mechanical equipment as it sits in the space. Then we have E4.2, which is the roof plan. So we've got mechanical equipment that sits on the roof, which tells the electrician that they'll need to run power through the roof assembly to feed this rooftop equipment. So if we keep going to the next sheet, we've got E5.1 schematic power and fire alarm riser diagrams. Now, if I zoom in on the power riser diagram, this gives us a simple layout of how the power enters the building from the transformer to the meter, to the main switch gear or switch board. From there, it shows a simple one line diagram of how the rest of the branch panels are fed in relationship to that main switch gear or switch board on the project. And if you recall from earlier of us looking briefly at the panel board schedule for our receptacles and our lighting, we actually see this panel board L and C amongst the rest of these panel boards. And right below that, we have the same diagram for the fire alarm system. So moving on from this sheet to the next sheet, which is E5.2, telecom and security riser diagrams, we can briefly zoom in and see the same layout for those specific systems. All right, on to E6.1, we have our electrical details. And looking at this detail six, we see how we're supposed to install conduit underground for our light poles. Moving over to detail 10, we see grounding requirements at the transformer. Finally, on detail four, it shows us exactly how the conduit is intended to run and enter that pad. So this tells us a little bit more about sequencing of the work and everything that needs to happen before power actually goes live in that transformer. Moving on to E6.2, which is just more electrical details. In our conference room from earlier, we were called the letter A for the administration drop. And on this page, I'm gonna zoom in on this detail where we can clearly see what's intended for an administration drop, which includes both receptacles and data outlets. Down on detail 13, we've got our light pole base detail. So I'm gonna skip over E6.3 and E6.4, electrical details continued because these are just similar pages expanding on those close up details and we'll just have to look at those when we return to them and then we're gonna move on to E7.1. So here we are on E7.1, panel board schedules. So on this page, each of these charts relate back to specific panel boards. And I'm gonna zoom in top left and look at this switchboard MDP. It gives us information on the switchboard itself, such as voltage, phasing, wiring, mounting, and enclosure type. Then lower on this switchboard, we see four lines, C and C1, L, M, and R via TR. So this main switchboard feeds all our other branch panels on this page and the next page. So if we were to go to branch panel M, we can see right at the top that it's fed from this MDP. If we go over to L, it says the same thing. So now we can trace power from an end light fixture or receptacle back to its panel board and then back to the main switchboard, which goes back to the transformer outside the building, which ties into the overall electrical grid, completing the whole circuit. So E7.2, the next sheet is going to be the same exact thing with additional branch panels. And finally, on E7.4, we have our lighting control schedule. So right at the top of this page, we see our conference room that we were originally looking at, which had those manual wall switches. Now, this sheet is gonna explain how the switching is supposed to be set up and controlled in conjunction with our sensors in the space. All right, that's enough for today. Hopefully you've got a decent understanding now of how to read and digest electrical drawings. But if you do have a comment or a question, feel free to drop it below, which reminds me, 
I've got to go pay my electrical bill. So as always, be better, build better, and bye for now. <laughs>